Hopefully you don't hear all the noise outside. I open the window because it's like scorching hot in here. My cat's in the room. It's just, we're playing, we're playing a dangerous game. Ah, he's bugging the rats. I know, but you're being a butt. So today I want to talk to you about depression and recovering from depression. This is kind of continuing with my series-ish about health and mental health and stuff like that, but I specifically wanted to talk about depression because I feel like it's something that affects a lot of people and it affected me for a long time and basically how I, I want to say overcame depression, but then it's kind of, I just, I don't like the whole mentality that that implies, but basically how, how I recovered from my depression and it's just, my advice on that, but also what I think about it. So hopefully I'm not too close to you. I feel, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm inside you. Let me just. So I've gotten a lot of comments about how, you know, I look better, I look happier and I am happier. I am just, I'm in such a better place right now. And I just, I understand myself better and I'm just, I'm on a medication that's been a game changer for me. And anyway, so when I go see doctors and I tell them how I'm feeling and why I'm feeling better and all that stuff, I'm kind of met with this like, yeah, you see like a positive attitude is what changes things. And it's like, yes and no. Lately, it's like, it's not that my symptoms are all gone. It's not like I'm not exhausted all the time. It's not like I've just suddenly become more functional. It's just that I've stopped pushing myself to do more than I can. And I've accepted the fact that I will always not be able to do as much as what is expected of me. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that I'm not doing anything. I'm still getting plenty accomplished. I'm learning to acknowledge and appreciate the small accomplishments, including things like waking up, eating something so that I could take my medication, taking a shower, changing the garbage, anything, throwing out a fucking Kleenex next to my bed. Like I, I did something. I executed a task, I, I got something done. And acknowledging and appreciating those accomplishments has helped me to just better appreciate myself and helped me have the energy to do other things because I'm recognizing that I'm spending energy on doing these other things. These things that don't even seem like tasks to other people, that it just seems like, like they haven't done anything yet today. Like, oh, I didn't leave my house yet. But it's like, you've still done plenty. You, you woke up, you drank water, you did something. Those are tasks and appreciating those and understanding that those are taking energy away from other things helps you have the energy for the other things because you're not spending all that time beating yourself up over like, wow, why do I already feel like I've done so much today? It's like, because you, you have. Even just today, I began to re-engage in that old dialogue that I used to have where I woke up and I was immediately tired. It felt just impossible to think about getting anything done and I was starting to get hard on myself. And then I remembered, like I'm 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 actually I'm sick right now. I have a sinus infection. I'm on antibiotics. The sinus infection itself is very tiring because my body is sick and is trying to get better, but also the antibiotics are very hard on my stomach ulcer. That's very tiring. I have a stomach ulcer that's being aggravated at the moment. It's like there are things happening inside you that are taking energy and like, it's okay. I'm not telling you to just like throw yourself on the ground and wait for like this sweet embrace of death. I'm just, I'm saying it's okay to acknowledge that those things are taking energy away from you so that you just stop being so upset and confused or maybe I'm just projecting. That's how I used to feel, just upset and confused, TM Aaron 2018. I just, I didn't understand why I was always so tired. But anyway, this is how I overcame my depression. I changed the way I think about things, but it's not just that. So before you go and give all your friends motivational speeches on how if they just changed their outlook on life, they would cure their depression, just back, just back up. Back up a couple of scented candles and like bath bombs and like namaste. It's just a couple, just come back to me, come back. When you are depressed and there's something chemical happening and it's just not being taken care of, it, for me at least, felt physically impossible to think differently or change my outlook on life. Or it's just, you don't even have the energy to make that analysis. I cannot explain to you. It's as if you have a broken bone that hasn't been reset and put in a cast and given the right environment to heal. And you know, sometimes after a really bad broken bone, you'll have to go to physiotherapy so that, you know, you could rebuild the muscles in your leg, let's say for example, and like there's work involved and you need to be positive and all that stuff. But before, before any of that could happen, the bone needs to be set, the cast needs to be put on and the person needs to be off of that leg. There's a healing process that happens before the whole recuperation therapy, but I don't know what word I'm looking for. <laughs> before the therapeutic part happens, before the whole like putting that work into it and changing your outlook and just being positive and accepting small victories, before that could happen, there's just the healing process where we're gonna continue with the broken leg analogy, where, where you just need to be off the leg 
and you need crutches, you need support so that the broken part could heal. And after it is healed, yes, the leg is still weak from the healing process, other things have weakened in the time that it took your leg to heal, but now the bone is back together and you're ready to start putting that effort in. You could put that effort in without making things worse and then you'll start to get better and that's where your active effort starts to come in. If someone were to never get that initial treatment, that initial, you know, cast on the leg, bone is in the right place, the crutches that they need, if, if they were just told immediately like, yeah, you broke your leg, okay, but like, just, just walk. Like, have you tried just walking? Have you tried just like, you know, don't tell yourself you can't walk, just try it. And if it hurts, just keep going. It's like, it's going to get worse and it's never going to heal or it's going to improperly mend itself. And mental health is the same thing. You need support, those crutches. You need that emotional support. You need some of the labor to be taken off of whatever needs to be mended. And you need that, that treatment, doctors to treat you. A lot of people really do benefit from medication and sometimes it's trial and error. And in my case particularly, it's not an antidepressant that I needed, but an ADHD medication, but it also acts as an antidepressant for me, but finding that chemical balance for me was key. And being given the time to heal and just not being at work, not being at school, I did nothing. But I did do something, I healed. I took the pressure off of what was hurting me and I gave it time to mend itself. And it took long and day to day, you may not see the improvement, but it is happening, you are healing. And when you're ready, you don't really have to force it. I didn't have to bully myself into thinking positively and changing the way that I view what's happening around me. I went to therapy and through therapy and patience, slowly I just started to change my expectations of myself and the way that I view things and the way that I execute things and it's just really hard to explain but just yes my positive outlook on life and I learned what things like learned helplessness are which are when someone is under the impression that they don't have the power to change their situation and that in itself could be depressing yes there is all of that but sometimes you know people are in a situation where they feel powerless because they haven't been given any power any power to take care of themselves you just go to work go to school do this do, just, there's so much to do and it's like people need breaks sometimes and a break doesn't mean a week a month it could it could be years it could be two years it could be three years it could be five years it's like just let people take a break and you're not a therapist. Let their therapist take care of it. Therapy with the right therapist, shop around. There's no shame in changing therapist if therapist doesn't work for you, but therapy with the right person, I just, I cannot explain how important that is. And you'll know if it's the right person because if it's not the right person, it it's just, it's not helping you and that person isn't getting you and they're bullying you. If it feels like they're bullying you, it's not therapy. It's like a high school football coach from like, the 70s. So if it feels like you're in gym class and there's a coach yelling at you to climb a rope, not the therapist, not, not the one for you. You should feel supported and you should feel empowered and you should feel hopeful. That's what good therapy feels like. So for me, it was this whole mix of things. So I got my EDS diagnosis and I, I understood why my body was in so much pain and I stopped being blamed for it. You know, like doctors telling me like, maybe you get hurt all the time because you know, you set yourself up for that. You're thinking negatively. Maybe the pain is in your head. Maybe, you know, you're too negative. So your body can't heal itself. Just all that nonsense. If, if you're a doctor, please just stop. Maybe, you know, maybe if you want to suggest those things, suggest it after you've done every possible test, including sending your patient to a rheumatologist, to a geneticist, running all these fucking tests, like test everything before you resort to blaming our mental health because physical pain being untreated or unacknowledged is literally trigger warning, something that rendered me completely suicidal because it just, it didn't make sense to me. It's like, I'm tired all the time. I have chronic migraines. I'm in pain. My joints pop out of their sockets all the time. They're sublux. So the joint means it's not a full dislocation. It's a partial dislocation, but they'll just pop in and out to do what they want. I break things. My leg, it just gives way under me. Like, it's just, it means that I can't engage in the physical activities that I'm being told I should engage in so that my mental health gets better. So I tried running, I get hurt. I try biking, I get hurt. I try kickboxing, I get hurt. I try swimming, I get hurt. There's nothing that I was able to do that didn't hurt my body. And now with EDS, I understand what type of movements I should be engaging in and the type of physical activity that I should be doing. And my expectations of myself are different. And the amount of time between training sessions is different. And it's just, it's just different. And it's, it's coming from a place of understanding instead of a place of, well, I'm broken and I need to wait till I'm better. It's like, I have EDS. I'm going to be in pain. This is my life. This is what it's like. And I'm not 
sad about it. Sometimes I'm upset, you know, sometimes I feel like it's not fair, but everyone has their thing. There's always something that happens to people that's not fair, and it's not to say like, oh, well, your pain isn't real because someone else is suffering. It's not that. It's just I detach myself from that idea of like, why is it always me? Because that kind of makes it feel like you're the only one suffering and you're not. And other people's suffering doesn't take away from your suffering, it just helps you acknowledge that sometimes it's a normal part of life. And if other people are able to be happy living with the same condition or living with another condition it's just it makes me realize that there's hope for me in my future and that i could also be living happily but again i was only able to get to that point because i finally found doctors who were willing to listen to me and test me and diagnose me i found out i had adhd i wouldn't be able to even make this video if i weren't on my adhd medication right now and before you ask i'm on vivance or vivance or however you pronounce it wherever you live vivance um is very similar to wellbutrin in that they're both drugs that are active on dopamine and norepinephrine uh, rather than serotonin. With most typical antidepressants, the first line of antidepressants is usually SSRIs, which are selective serotonin reptic inhibitors, so they are drugs that are active on serotonin. Or SNRIs, serotonin norepinephrine reptic inhibitors, drugs that are active on serotonin and norepinephrine. But for me, I personally, I don't think that serotonin is the issue for me. My ADHD medication is my antidepressant because in my brain, it was dopamine and norepinephrine that needed a little, a little, little, little helping hand, you know? So without those diagnoses and the support that I needed, so, you know, I was given the crutches. So the crutches being, you know, the doctors I needed to support me, the accessibility center at my school that understands that I need to be able to write my exam in a completely isolated room. I need to be in dead silence. My partner understanding that I need to be in a closed room to study, sometimes I need to be alone to study. That was my support and for me, if we go back to the broken leg thing, the bone being set and the cast being placed is like the medication for me and the time off of my feet, which is the exact same thing. Time off your feet because you broke something or time off your feet because you're tired. It's just time, just having time for myself. It took me two years to regain the energy just to feel any kind of joy. And people who haven't had depression don't understand that like, it's not as simple as just forcing yourself to feel happy. It's like, I can't explain. You could show me something that would usually make me so happy and i'm i'm actually an easily excitable person even though it doesn't show on the outside i just i get really excited over little things just things like i don't know you have dinner with like some friends or something or like with your dad you go over to someone's house have dinner and then someone's like let's go to the ice cream castle which is just an ice cream parlor in a castle and you're like yes that is i'm so excited your heart jumps like up to here and you're just fucking pumped and it's a good day like that that happens to me quite easily and i'm so happy that i have that back because it was a joy that I wasn't feeling anymore and it's something that my medication has given back to me. It gave me back my dopamine. Thank you. <laughs> so once all of that was in place and I was given that whole like crutches, cast, you know, support, all that, there was a healing process where it's like I wasn't instantaneously ready, like positive thinking, bring it to me. Like it wasn't, it wasn't that quick, but my therapist encouraged me to try just one class, just sign up for one class, and if I can't do it, she's going to write me a letter to excuse me from the class for medical reasons. So there's no, it's not gonna ruin my GPA, but it'll just, just to see what it's like. So I did, and I took um, a psychology class, and I ended up, like I said in my last video, I ended up getting 100 in it, which I'm not trying to brag, it's just I, I can't explain to you what I would have thought had someone told me a few months ago that I would get 100% in a class, that I would even be able to finish a class. I can't explain to you. So being given those correct tools and then being put into this perfect little environment where I have just one class and no work and my only commitment and my only priority is this one class and my success in it. And now that I have all these tools, all right, let's see how you do in this class. And I get also the support that I need in the class and it's just this great little, it's someone planted a little seed and watered it and took very good care of me, their little plant. I'm their little plant that they put on the windowsill in indirect sunlight and you know, they give it special little plant vitamins. Like that's, that, that was me, I was a little plant. And I grew into a big happy sprout and that's it. It's gonna continue to take work and effort to keep me healthy and keep me growing because I'm a sickly little plant, but I am growing nonetheless. You can't go ahead and, well, all the other plants are outside. Let's just plant them outside, which is my metaphor for throwing me back into the workplace. Like everyone else is doing, oh, look at these trees, they're towering. You have to grow outside, there's not enough space in here. I need 
to be inside. I'm, I'm a houseplant. I thrive indoors and I may be smaller and it may take me longer to grow. It may take a lot more effort to get me to grow, more resources to get me to grow, but I will continue to grow nonetheless. And there's nothing wrong with me needing more resources. I'm still an important plant and so are you. So that's it. That's my little video about depression and recovering from depression. But I think of depression and positive thinking and all that stuff. And if you'd like to hear me talk about this more, go ahead and let me know. I hope you are all feeling okay and that you're taking good care of yourselves. And I love you very much. All right, see you next time. Bye.